Okay, I've never done a trailer analysis video before, but if I was going to do one for anything, it might as well be for this. Voltron Legendary Defender. If you're not watching this show, what the hell is wrong with you? It's for new fans, it's for OG fans, it's for everybody. There's only two seasons left before the show wraps up. I don't know how they're going to top season six, but the season seven trailer just came out, and I'm going to take a close look at this thing, see if I can figure out what's going on, and maybe make some predictions about what we can expect when season seven drops in just a few weeks. So without further delay, let's get started. So right off the bat, we know a few things. The Castle of Lions is gone, and in order to get the plans to build a new castle, they have to get back to Earth. And since they can't access wormholes anymore, they're going to have to take the scenic route. So we should expect a fair chunk of Season 7 to be an intergalactic road trip with some pit stops along the way. As you've most likely heard by now, and I don't know how you could have missed it since it's been all over the place, the big news coming out of the Voltron San Diego Comic-Con panel is that not only has Shiro been confirmed as an LGBT character, but he had a male significant other back on Earth as well. Which I have to say, just made me cackle like a hyena when I heard about it. Because for six damn seasons, all these SJW fans have been screaming from the rooftops that Lance is LGBT! Lance is LGBT! He's in love with Keith and blah blah blah! Despite there not being a shred of concrete evidence to support it, and despite Lance having this long-running unrequited romance subplot with Alora, And then it turns out that Shiro was openly gay the whole time, and people are completely blindsided by it. <laughs> I just find that hilarious. But anyway, that's clearly what we're seeing here. Shiro's got all black hair, so obviously a flashback. That should be his partner Adam right there. We don't see his face, but according to the producers, they broke up due to Adam not wanting Shiro to go on the Kerberos mission, and it's implied that Shiro has some unresolved feelings about this. So we can definitely expect to see Adam when the team returns to Earth. Here we have someone telling the team that no one has seen them since their fight with Lotor and everyone thinks they're dead, which implies that there's been some kind of time jump. Maybe when they were fighting Lotor in the Quintessence field, time was moving differently for them somehow? But it didn't seem to pass any differently for Koran, who didn't go into the field with them, so maybe it happens a different way. It's not clear right now, but some amount of time has passed, and knowing the way this show operates, it should be just enough time for things to go completely to hell. What I'm interested in is, who's telling them this? Because to me, that sounds a lot like Aksha. This would make sense to me, as one of my theories is that Aksha is on a path to becoming an ally of Team Voltron. She's always seemed to have more layers to her than Zethrid and Azor do. Plus, the writers have definitely set up something between her and Keith. What exactly that is, I'm not sure. She could be his half-sister by Krolia, she could be his future love interest. I'm leaning toward the latter right now. But it's always been subtly hinted that Aksha either admired or had some kind of feelings for Lotor. So she might be at something of a crossroads after he turned into a scenery-chewing lunatic. My theory is that either all three generals become allies of Voltron, or Zethrid and Azor turn on Aksha, which leads to her getting a redemption arc. Either way, I think the direction for Aksha will eventually have her seeing something in Keith that she thought she saw in Lotor. Whether that becomes romantic or not, I don't know, but I think there's a pretty decent chance. And there's definitely some chemistry between them. And who knows, maybe that's why Keith has never shown any romantic or physical attraction to humans before. Maybe Galra chicks are just what does it for him. Here we see the lions being attacked and the Galra using weapons the team has never seen before. This would make sense. Since Hagar made that visit to Orian, she now has access to all that crazy Altaian alchemy knowledge. So she'll probably be coming up with lots of newfangled hardware for whichever Galra factions are siding with her. Also, Hagar is going to have everything she needs to make wormholes now, just when the team has lost that ability, which is going to be a big damn problem, as we see here. Pidge's dad, Commander Holt, sending out an SOS. So, worst fears more or less confirmed. It seems the Galra have paid a visit to Earth while the Paladins were away. But factoring in the time jump, the question is, how long have they been there, and how long will it take the Paladins to even reach Earth when they can't wormhole? I suspect it's going to take enough time for the Galra to seriously wreck shop. And here we have... Good God. One of the most terrifying images I've ever seen in Western animation. A giant Lovecraftian abomination with three rows of teeth? Nightmare fuel for weeks. We get a bunch of action beats without much context here. Hunk is uncomfortably close to a big explosion. That's not good. And what is this? This kind of looks like they're back in the quintessence field, except it's colored differently. So maybe the portal isn't 100% closed like they thought? Did they go back in to retrieve Lotor? Why they're not in their lions is the big question mark. 
Here we see what appears to be Alora using her quintessence magic like the friggin' Iron Fist, so her powers are still growing. And here's a concern I have about that. At this point, Alora's magic can do pretty much anything the plot requires. And if you want to avoid her entering full-on Deus Ex Machina territory, and for the record I think she's nearly there, there has to come a time when that magic fails her. Like she comes to rely on it, depend on it, trust her ability to use it to accomplish anything, and then she needs the magic to do something really important, and for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. And then there are big time consequences for that. Because right now, Allura can just magic her way out of almost any problem. And you only get so many moments like that before it just starts to make things way too easy. Okay, this part's weird. Suddenly the lions don't have enough power to form Voltron. But I thought the lions had an unlimited supply of power due to the quintessence-infused ore they were made from. King Alphor as much as said so in that Origin episode in Season 3, so I'm not sure how this happens. Maybe Hagar created a new weapon that sucked the quintessence out of the lions, or maybe their power was tied into the castle somehow? Which would feel like a bit of a soft retcon, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. But it does seem like, on top of not being able to wormhole, the lions aren't going to be completely reliable either. Some more action beats, Keith teleporting along with his space wolf during a fight, because I guess Keith is just gonna get to do all the cool stuff until there's nothing left for any of the other characters to do, Lance getting shot at by a Galra fighter in a desert, and that overturned garrison vehicle on the right tells us they're back on Earth at this point. As for the girl he's protecting in this shot, it's not quite clear who she is. If that's Alora, then she's had a change of clothes at some point. Those kind of look like her colors with the white, black, and pink, but if they're in a battle, I don't know why she wouldn't be wearing her paladin armor, so my guess is that it's not Alora. Romel would be the next guess, but I don't see why they'd bring her to Earth. There's no real reason for her to come along. So this is probably a human girl. It was mentioned in Season 5 that Lance had some kind of a thing with a girl from the garrison named Jenny. Maybe it's her. Or possibly Lance's sister, Veronica, who's also been mentioned previously. But whoever she is, I just hope her suit is fireproof, because... Yikes. Damn, first the Lotora thing and now this? Lance is having a tough time lately. And Jeremy Shada did let it slip that there's a Lance scene coming up this season that is full-on sobbing, so we know something real bad is gonna happen to Lance pretty soon. This might be it. Here we have the team hanging onto the Yellow Lion for dear life as they pass through... God only knows. And Hunk is outside the Lion with the rest of them, so who's piloting? Or does the Lion not have the energy to fly at this point? Are their power issues gonna be that bad? And finally, we have Sendak hitting them where they live in what is almost certainly the fire of purification invading Earth because Team Voltron just cannot catch a break. That'll most likely be what the season finale is about. So that's our Season 7 trailer, and we can infer a lot of things from this. There's been some kind of time jump. We don't know how long exactly, but it's been long enough for the team's absence to have been felt with everyone thinking they're dead. That's probably enough time for Sendak and or Hagar to have taken over the Empire, so I wouldn't expect the Coalition to be in good shape right now. Team Voltron is up shit creek without the castle, which I'm guessing is why the Lions are having power issues, but again, I'm not sure how that works because the Lions always seem to be self-powered before. So I hope there's a good explanation for that one. They're probably going to encounter Aksha on their way home at some point, and they may not be at odds with her anymore when that happens. She might fight them initially, but I don't think that'll last long, and I'm pretty sure she'll end up as an ally by the end. And possibly more than allies with Keith. Also, the team is going to be in very dire straits multiple times, so the danger appears to have been ramped up a lot. And Lance... Oh no. Protect my boy Lance. Where's the Red Lion, dammit? Your human needs help. But after much speculation, we know the team will in fact reach Earth in Season 7, and we'll be getting backstory on Shiro and probably the others as well, which for Lance and Hunk in particular is long overdue. However, when they do reach Earth, it doesn't look like it's going to be the joyful reunion they were hoping for. I guess we should be happy that at least the Galra haven't simply destroyed the Earth, but let's not give the writers any ideas, because I honestly wouldn't put that past them. So that concludes our trailer analysis. Are you excited for Voltron Season 7? Do you want me to talk more Voltron in the future? Let me know down below. Also, if you like what you see here, hit subscribe for TV reviews, movie reviews, and more stuff just like this. Smash the bell for notifications, and I'll see you guys real soon. Over. Out.